Dads, Lads and Kebabs. Sponsored by Ghostalware. And now, it's Dads, Lads and Kebabs. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, good welcome to another show of Dads, Lads and Kebabs. 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 Good evening and welcome to another show of Jazz Lads and Kebabs. All right, lads. All right, lasses. How's it going? You all right? Oh, eyes down. Let's tickle them balls. Hello, everybody. Good evening. Good morning. How are you all doing? Niall Q. It's... What's that mean? What's your name? You've changed your name. Uh, oh, 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 Niall Quinn. Football player, terrible shit. Football player. Why are you being Noel Quinn for? I don't know. Typo. No. Let's just let's just call it a typo. Do Ooh. you have to put your name in every time? Because it's on mm. your phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it doesn't stay there. Mm. Oh, okay. stay there. No, oh, like I didn't you. know that. I'm just a guest on this show. You're the fucking guest. You're the host. I'm the host with the most. <laughs> Some would say. Some uh, would say. But they don't. <laughs> but they don't. They don't give a fuck. They, they don't do give not. a shit. No. <laughs> How you doing, sir? How are you? I'm all right. I'm clean now. I've had what from? Mud- I've had the muddiest week I've ever fucking had. <laughs> Head to toe in wet, sloshy mud. But it, it was in a... It was a a satisfactory week. Missions were completed. I passed. Yeah. With flying colours. There there was comments of being impressed with me, yes, from the instructor. Good. I'd only been doing it for one day and then two day, you know. So yeah. So I think I did well. I did well. I'm not gonna go into what I did. If you're on Facebook and you you've seen some of my posts, then then you'll know. Then you'll know. And if you don't, then that's your problem. Do you know what? You can just say the cringy saying, I hate, I hate this saying. But if you know, no, you, you know. know. <laughs> <laughs> if you know, you know. If you don't, tough shit. <laughs> Listen, but, but yeah. if you know, you know. But if you don't know, one one day in the near future, it could be the last person <laughs> digging your trench. <laughs> <laughs> Bye bye, bye bye. And lower the ground. <laughs> oh mate, good for you. Honestly, so happy for you. You did it. Yeah, hundred percent on the written test as well. Out of thirty marks, hundred percent. So I'm happy with that. <clears throat> Everything. So you're new. in now. You're in. Yeah. yeah. Get a little license Face. card and everything. It's a well. It's a, it's a tr- it's a real thing, right? It's it's a. Yeah, it's not an in-house thing, so that's good. No, no, no. It's one of those things that you, and you have to be qualified. Being qualified for that sort of thing is probably quite a serious business, really, because it's not sort of any... They just, you know, give every Tom, Dick, and Harry go. But anyway, congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. You've not only secured the position, you've also now passed the entry, and you're in permanently. I'm in. The yeah, grim, the the grim is my mate. Yeah. See you in a bit. <laughs> yes, well done, mate. You feel good for it. I do. Yeah, I felt really happy Friday. Like I've achieved something. Well, I have because everything, every day basically has been new thing, new people, new experiences. Totally out of my comfort zone every single day for seven days, mm-hmm. and yeah, it's it's different. But you just got a roll of it, and how, in terms of pressure though, that you've had recently, in terms of what's been going on and stuff with work and everything else, how do you feel now? Do you feel like there's been a big shift in energy in terms of how you feel? Yeah, very positive, very happy, um, nice and chilled. So yeah, totally different lifestyle now, but. You know, that's what happens when you change job and the toxicity 
from the old job sort of disappears and then the new there if you're not happy just just move change change job for whatever reasons if it's going to affect your life and if you're not sleeping because of a shit job and if you're not happy and your personal life and circumstances are being effective and and friendships and relationships then just fucking change do something new don't just try something else that's the same you know maybe try a totally different career which i have Mm -hmm. and go from there you never know it's working out for me touch wood so far so yeah awesome i think that's the good thing though right people think that you have to have like you spend 50 or percent 50 percent of your life is working to su- survive yeah. the other 50 percent of your life or maintain it i don't think you have to be a, i mean listen work is work no matter what you do work is work however there's got to be an element of job satisfactory like job security and also feeling like you want to go to work like nobody wants to do a job, but they fucking dread going to work every Monday. That was me. Like, if you if you dreaded it, then you, like it's game over. Get out. Yeah. And I know sometimes you can't. You, you're tied into you're tied into work for whatever reason. But like you you really you really took a plunge. You took a lot. You you know you you, you had a quite high position. You know you a lot of responsibility in your yeah. hands. But also, it secured a lot of your time, though, as well. Like you were, you were there morning, night, late, overnight, weekends, early, yeah. weekends. No, like no security of your actual. And that's the balance, right? Is everybody talks about work-life balance? However, your work was up here, and you had to fit whatever you wanted to do in your life around that job. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That should, it should never be that way. And and towards the end all my responsibilities and the little things that made me proud to do my job were all taken away from me demoralizing made to feel like i wasn't needed i'm not worthy of the job Mm -hmm. and it's just like fuck you you know it's simple as that though right it's like make the most of me make the most of my knowledge I've got other people coming for different places into my shifts, taking over my shifts and then ask running my shifts and then asking me how to do the job. Well, I'm sorry, but fuck you. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm good. No, thanks. no responsibility for me. Fuck your laundry. Fuck your kitchen. Fuck all your jobs that aren't done because none of you know what the fuck you're doing so there you go i'm just sat there little mickey in the background doing a couple of little things that's fine by me i used to do 100 things a shift now i'm doing four that's fine same money yeah fuck you but you've done it now you've done yeah. it you've pulled the you've pulled the like you pulled the plug pulled the plunge and you said enough's enough i'm not doing it anymore i'm not i'm not making myself unhappy for this shit and you have not only turned it around by securing new and new employment but you've you've took a whole new life on because you never had every evening you never had every weekend to yourself no. the weekend you, thing is a big difference it is weird nice. isn't it it's weird as well it's weird <laughs> when you're like oh my god it's friday afternoon i've finished and now the weekend's my own it's weird every weekend i know it's like, like, what can I do? What can I, where can I go? What can I Clean the car, go out for the day, make plans for the entire weekend. Like you could go away Friday, you can go away Friday night and come back Sunday afternoon. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Every yeah. weekend. I know. I went to Hellfire Caves weekend just gone. Mm-hmm. So back underground with the devil. <laughs> so Brilliant. Yeah. Mickey's now start. Mickey's now, uh, you know, no longer working weekends, and he chooses to uh, spend his weekends underground. Yay! <laughs> Why not? Hey, Why not, man? It's hey, gonna be done. Listen, <laughs> it makes you happy, bro. Yeah, you you happy with it? It's good. So how's your week been? 
Oh, what has my week been like? All sorts. Um, busy, productive. Yeah. Oh, definitely productive. I've done lots of working out this week, lots of work. Mm-hmm. Um, all sorts of shit. Super Bowl Sunday for these American football fans out there. Bloody hell, that was a, a bit much of that going on all over, weren't there? Who won it in the end? Oh, I don't know. Who cares? All I do know is that (laughs) ticket prices were like twenty five thousand dollars a ticket, and and, uh, the ad revenue for the the halftime show, wow, (sighs) they're like a million dollars a second, don't they, to get an advert in the halftime Super Bowl slot? It's crazy. I didn't realize how I didn't realize how big it was. But do you know what? The only thing the the only thing that kind of got me thinking was. We are shit as a country when it comes to any anything like that. Like the atmosphere that Americans provide and have as a like they get together in even if you don't have a ticket for the game, right? They get together in like a fucking car park and they'll yeah. basically they'll have like a they'll have like a barbecue. Barbecue, I've game, seen them, yeah, yeah. They listen on to the radio screen. or whatever, yeah. yeah. And it's like we don't have that atmosphere. We Tesco have... car park. <laughs> Come on, let's get the, the trunk open. <laughs> get the music out. Like, it's crazy. I get it, right? Americans are over the top. In my eyes, I wouldn't say over the top. I'd say they're just, like, they're making the best out of life. Like, Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, if it's your local town, you'll go and see, there'll be a game on a Friday night, and the like, entire town's going to this game. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Or, like, there's a cookout or something like that. You think, fuck it, I wish we did shit like that. I wish we had, wish we had areas of the country where like everyone's going to this one area to celebrate this game. Why? Like you might not even love football, but you would fucking participate. Yeah, we're not allowed. Like, can you imagine, country. Probably rules to stop us. Can you imagine? Can you imagine <laughs> what the lineup would be? I just thought. If there was a lineup, say if there was a British version of the Super Bowl, mm. and the lo- the music lineup for the halftime show, like Rick Astley, <laughs> like, <laughs> and the ad- and the adverts would be like Asda, <laughs> quick a- Asda, quick fit, <laughs> the shit brands. <laughs> Kerry Kerry Katona doing like you know the Iceland <laughs> the Iceland advert you'd be like come on mums <laughs> this is this is this is why we don't have a Super Bowl in the UK <laughs> <laughs> you're fucking oh, crazy nah. yeah we're just not that enthusiastic like I think I think I think some people are I think a lot of people want to be but I do think like everything in this country a lot of things that we do that we used to do that we want to do is sort of frowned upon for whatever reason and i think people just think oh there's no point you know there's there's like a, a negativity cloud over the uk and i think that just stays there occasionally some people are... good things come through and happiness and positivity but i think as a general rule i think that's why a lot, I think a lot as well, people are like, they sh- not embarrassed, but they shield themselves from showing that enthusiasm. Mm. Like, I remember, I remember when just after lockdown, there was like a street party sort of thing, like a the Jubilee, wasn't what, it? Jubilee, Jubilee, that was it. Yeah. I remember because I lived on a, I lived on a new build estate and I remember it was locked down. So we weren't technically still in my houses. But the entire street went out their front door and was like basically just, just basically communicating. Hello, neighbor. Communicating, Hello. Like, and I'm talking. It wasn't. It wasn't as big. People were just taking like little bits of food out and offering bits of food. And it was like, yeah, like yeah. Do, you want, do you want a beer? But there was other people on the street that were like, the "Fuck are these weirdos? What are they doing? <laughs> Get with a program. Like, like, stay in your houses. Be miserable. Like, yeah, I just yeah. think sometimes." British people are just too... I know, I get it, right? Right now, in this current climate of the world, we don't have a lot to be happy about, but it's also too fucking small to be miserable, though. Mm. Like, we ain't got enough time to be fucking miserable, because you never know what's around the corner. 
<laughs> like, you never know what's going on. I do know what's around the corner. Valentine's Day, Nile. Two oh, days' time. Valentine's. Love is in the air. Everywhere, Everywhere I look around. Look around. <laughs> How do you feel about that? Are you a Valentine's Day yet? Are you a... I think, pe- are I you... think people are conned into it. Like, a lot of people say, if you love your partner or whoever, then... Oh, you sh- show them that one day. Because if you then don't, you, sh- then you, should you don't love them. You should you should show it all year round. You don't need a day just to say, "Oh, oh. oh is a card, it's some chocolates that make you fat," and then yeah. moan about it. And then, <laughs> you know? Here's some flower. Here's some flowers, flowers. from the garage that I got. Yeah. I got on the way home. Let's let's go to dinner and not be able to book it. And the blokes that don't realise you need to book on Valentine's Day and they just turn up at the restaurant or the pub. Can I have a table for two? <laughs> you wish. And then they have a yeah. row with the missus, and then they they go to bed angry with each other, and it's like. Oh dear! Day done. <laughs> exactly. That, that's another Valentine's Day fucking ruined. <laughs> you ruined another one. Yeah. Yeah. Man. I, I I don't know. So I'm not. Oh, I again. Me talking about you know weighing up the pros and cons. Here, me talking about the British people being very miserable and blah blah blah. Here's me going. Things with Valentine's Day for me is I'm just not. I'm not sold that it, like you said. It's a day that you fucking have to do something i used to be in my past i used to like go to dinner buy the cards buy the mickey's froze buy flowers um but no not now (laughs) not anymore i think (laughs) yeah not anymore but yeah but do, do, I think, do, do you have to, though? Eat, like, I get it, right? Cards are nice. A little card. Hmm. Like, you know, a little card. Maybe, like, whatever you do. Like, that, I think whatever you do on that day is fine. If you recognise it. it. I mean, say, you know, you have a spouse, a partner, a wife, husband, whatever. Hmm. Like, if you recognise it as the day and just say, you know, here's a card. Here's a, here's a, here's a cheeky finger. <laughs> <laughs> I'll slip hold, you on later. Hold that. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. That's yeah, but, but you you see you see on social media mainly Facebook though. Um, your friends post their misses or whatever, and oh. they're like at the restaurant and they show like the the cards and the little wine glass with the bottle next to it or whatever. Or they have pictures the next morning and say, Oh, this is what we did last night on Valentine's Day. It's a bit like Christmas though, isn't it? When you have to you have to show pictures of your Christmas tree with your presents. You have to and show matching pajamas. Yeah, you have to show your Valentine's oh, fuck off. your Valentine's gifts with your teddy bears or your, wherever you went. The little the restaurant, the the old fashioned pub or whatever, wherever you went. Why can't you just go go karting? <laughs> you know? Do you know what I mean? Do something weird. Do something fun. Fuck the restaurant off. Get a kebab on the way home. Give her a card and go go karting or wrestling and or slip leather, one. <laughs> or golf. You know, do something out of the ordinary. Do because everyone remembers. Oh, would you be yeah, Valentine's? Oh, same every year restaurant. Blah, blah, blah. Same as people getting married. I don't think you should get married in a church. I think that's well boring. I think you should go to like Iraq or something and get married. You need you need to have a story to tell not maybe not Iraq, it's a bit dangerous, but a story to say, Oh, we got married in I don't know, Poland or whatever, outside mm. a big tree. It's a story to tell someone I think you should you should break away from the norm for Valentine's and do something different. Everyone's well, there you have it, people. The same thing. There you have it. Yeah. Nikki has told you what to do. If you don't listen <laughs> if you don't know what to do and you are struggling for Valentine's Day ideas. Listen to Mickey. <laughs> Go to Don't do any. <laughs> Go to honestly one of the most romantic spots. No, not Venice. No, definitely not Paris. We are talking the raw streets of Baghdad. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear! You know what I mean, though. You try. You know what I'm trying to get across. Just some totally randomness that. You remember. You're going to remember that trip. I get you. I get you. Yeah, yeah. I get what you're saying. Like, do something different. Or don't mm. do anything massive. 
how about just you know like you said grab some cook some food order some food sit and talk sit and i don't know or put all your photos put all your photos and put them up like make them into a little movie and put them on the tv yeah i mean i'm my wife does that. We look at all like holiday photos and holidays have mm. been on, places like that. We put them on the TV and we just sit and watch them and we go over the years. Reminisce. Yeah, yeah. it's good. I, yeah. like, I like things like that. Yeah. Like, I've always liked photos, thing. though. Making photo albums and. Yes. I I like printing pictures off. Yeah. Of things yeah. and getting pictures blown up, put on walls and that. I think mm-hmm. that's, yeah. that's, I, I prefer that than. Oh, there were romantic gestures. Could you call that romantic gesture, though? I think you can, because you're yeah. you're you're enjoying your 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 partner, your family, whatever it is. But you could do anything. You could do like, do you know what I mean? You could sit and do a quiz. Like, do you know, one of the things me and my wife done a few times where we sit, we watch the game. You know, like game shows are on TV with questions and that sort of stuff. Like, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Let's say the cube or freaking the chase. something. Just I love the chase. We, I watch that every day. <laughs> Look at him. He's no longer work. He's no longer working in the afternoons. People, he's watching the chase. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll sit. And, we'll sit and do like. We'll sit and do like proper tricky game shows, like the one percent. We like that. The one. Oh, I like. love watching that. Yeah, definitely one percent. So we'll, we'll sit and do that, but we'll do the questions. And if you get a question wrong, you're out. So we'll sit and <laughs> we'll sit and verse each other. And like, you're a fucking loser. You're a fucking loser. <laughs> Should be I have, ashamed of yourself. I have got a 1% question right once. Oh, me too. Yeah, the first one. <laughs> the first question. I'm no, in the no, ninth. No, the, fi- the, the, the final one, you don't know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. But the problem is with the 1% is you really have to... Do you know when common, someone says like... Common sense. Look at the whole box, though. Look at everything. Look, don't, logically... just read, don't just read the question. Look at the question. Look at the words. Look at the box it's in. How does it look? Because it's trying to make your brain not just work, but it's trying to make you see what's in front of you. Yeah. Mickey, got a joke for you. Just yeah. come to my head just now. What you call a Russian with three testicles? Udinika <laughs> Bolikov. <laughs> Don't Love kill it. me. <laughs> Don't kill me, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jack of the Eugenica. day. <laughs> oh, God. How old is that joke? That's very, that's very old. <laughs> I heard it the other day. And I was like, oh, my God, I've not heard that since all the fucking school. <laughs> that's almost Eugenica. as old as singing the old uh, Hitler has only got one ball song that we used to sing oh, at God. school as well. <laughs> so. it's all going on so valentine's day yeah listen i i'm if you i i'm not a lover but i'm not a hater like i'll do it to it i'll do it to whatever extent i feel i want to but i'm not an over the top person if you if you were with a partner and she wanted the big grand gesture. The, what, the big the, teddy and shit? All the teddies and the chocolates and the wine and going out for a meal. Would you be like, hmm? Or would you do it? Obviously, it depends on your situation yeah. with that person. If you're See, happy my, to do it, then yeah. My wife likes the effort in terms of the nice effort. She doesn't like grand gestures. She doesn't like big prizes or yeah. big big prizes big presents or anything like that. if i come out if i come out of the big teddy what the fuck am i supposed to do with that oh yeah it's really nice you bought me a teddy I'm, you know <laughs> do you know what i mean i'm 30 years old thanks <laughs> i remember one time in my past i um uh, i managed to get hold of a four foot me <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's always gonna make you laugh. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say midget. <laughs> <laughs> Can't say midget. It's a little person, <laughs> vertically challenged, whatever it is. Yeah, a, a four foot <laughs> me to you bear, and it was huge. I think I I got it. <laughs> I managed to win it on eBay for about one fifty. Yeah, no, it wasn't one fifty. Hundred fifty less, quid. Less than a hundred pound. But I think if you, you bought should've... it. If you bought it on their website, it was like six hundred pound. 
So, he should have hired a midget. <laughs> and pretended they were a teddy bear. <laughs> oh, yeah. Midget. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Fools what midget, man. You should have just called me, man. I'm only like... <laughs> foot. <laughs> Extra foot? What's that? Yeah, yeah. Extra couple of feet. Yeah, be fine. <laughs> Oh dear! Oh mate! No, I, My, imagine, um, I imagine there's lots of bad stories though for Valentine's that people. Do you think people break up on Valentine's Day? I think people break up. I think people, people that are cheating get caught out. You know, mm. what have you got? What have you a bloke or a man or a bird? That's the same it's got thing. A bit on. <laughs> or whatever. Sorry. Right. Or a four foot midget who's got a bit on the side. You're getting caught out on Valentine's Day. Who are you buying a card for? You've got one that says wife, one that says... I don't know. Shag, shag piece. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> peace, peace on a Friday. <laughs> That's what I mean, because yeah. the, the side bit wants to see or wants to have a bit on that day, but you've got commitments to the wife or the, the girlfriend or whatever. You're double-dicking, mate. That's all well, I'm going to say. It's like, how, how, how are people dealing with that? How are people that lead a naughty side life gonna manage to cope? Let us know in the comments. Yeah, are you You're one of these people? Oh, Can you imagine? I couldn't even. Oh, mate. I mean, I couldn't have a bit on the side. It'd be fucking draining. <laughs> Can you imagine you had a bit? Can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> you had a bit on the. Can you imagine you had a bit on the side, and just turned out to be a fucking nag, as like, and you'd be like, "Oh my god, seriously, Are you fucking joking?" <laughs> Got away from that. Oh. Not as if. Oh, and sake. you're doing it as well. <laughs> and it's funny how in the beginning stages of a relationship, do you know what I mean? It's fresh. It's Everything sexy. is fine. It doesn't matter. Everything I... looks good. I can put up with that annoying thing that you do every fucking oh, 10 yeah. minutes. You're like, listen, it's all <laughs> fresh. It's nice. Do you know what I mean? You're getting your balls licked on a Thursday. That sort of shit. Do you know what I mean? And then all of a sudden, a <laughs> couple of years down the line, and you're locked in. You are locked in. You are getting angry bastard. Get your shit out of the washing machine! <laughs> no, it's just me. No. No, 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 it doesn't happen to me. Of course it don't. <laughs> you, you do the washing, so I know that. You know, I, I do the washing. You're the cleaning man of the house. Oh, so. Yes, I am. Oh, yeah. Mrs. is at work, comes home, Niall's got the candles ready. That's it, we forgot candles. The the oh. rose, the rose, the fake paper <sighs> rose petals you buy in Smith's. You lay Candle. out. Candle? Fake rose petals, that's sending yeah. down A and E, telling yeah. you. And your house is burning down. And all over the floor from the front door to the dinner table when Niles prepared a lovely meal. Bollocks. I'd be too honestly my O C D would be going, Niall, there's rose petals on the floor. And you put them there. Clean them up. Now <laughs> Did you fight <laughs> with your internal system? Oh yeah. Nothing <laughs> honestly. My so that's my biggest outlet. If I'm angry, the biggest thing I'm doing is cleaning. Do you want to be Why? angry at my car? <laughs> I've got a snow machine. Oh. Honestly, I, for me, cleaning is my, it's my therapy. Mm. Like, and same, a lot of blokes are saying that. A lot of blokes like to cook. A lot of blokes like to clean. A lot of blokes are quite domesticated you now. I think so. But for me, I, I don't get, <clears throat> when I'm angry, I do two things. My wife knows I do two things. I'm cleaning, or... I, I like it. Do you know when people say, just bite your lip and move on? That's literally what I do. So I go, I do basically, that's me. That's my, that's my, if I'm angry. It's fine. I, fine. I, just, I don't, well, no, because I don't say anything. So don't do, arguing's not my thing. Arguing, I like, arguing, in arguing, I just like, it's like my robot just goes, there must be times where you think, Oh, I'm gonna bite. I'm gonna bite. No, you're not. Yes, I am. No, no, because that's it. That's me biting myself. That's all I do. So I just bite my lip and go. It's fine. I'll just go and clean. I don't really. I, I rarely get. I get. I'd say I get annoyed more at myself than anything. 
because of my well, because you've let it get you've let it get to that situation a lot yeah, of the time my... it's a pet it's a petty level as well it's a petty oh, thing yeah. that started a row and it's like why am i doing this why are we getting honestly involved? this is stupid all the time and do you know what I'll, I'll be honest with you our biggest row and honestly seriously biggest row that we ever have that continues all the time is what we have for dinner <laughs> Honest, uh, honestly that's it that is it what we have for dinner I don't know I picked last night okay is there anything you fancy I'm not bothered I'll eat anything oh, okay cool okay, uh, alright I don't want that any, any, any <laughs> and then I always say anything you don't want is there anything if I was going to cook something I'll get some is there anything you don't want not bothered. Okay. All right, babe. I'm just gonna get. I'll, I'm gonna do as a curry. No, I don't want a curry. <laughs> All right. Okay. So I'll um I'll do as you know I'll do as fajitas. No, I don't fancy fajitas. So you have got an idea of what you want. Just the you just not you don't want it. anyway. <laughs> and it continues. We don't do petty shit. So we we have we we have our strengths. We have our strengths. We have our weaknesses. Mm. And that's it. it. Just works like that. like. But I don't, uh, my wife's really good because we don't hold anything against each other. If I'm shit at something or she's shit at something, it's not like, okay, I always do this. Like, I, I'll i do everything. My pet hate is washing. Putting, and not doing the washing, but putting it away. I, I just don't. No, oh, afterwards. I, yeah. I'll keep until the pile is massive. It's huge. I'll wash all the washing. Wash, dry it all. And then there's a massive pile of clean washing. And I'll just you know, keep pushing it into a corner. Do you, what, do you know what used to make me happy in the in the you know when in, in the summer or the spring summer when it started to get hot or warm anyway and it wasn't raining and I'd do my own washing yeah and I could hang it out on the washing line. Oh, you'll be doing that. Oh no, no, Mickey, let's Mickey, let's just let's dream for a second. Eyes are closed. Eyes are closed. Okay, Mickey, it's a Saturday morning. <laughs> you're waking up and it's we're talking sort of early may birds are singing Ooh. yeah mm. right? let's be honest <laughs> tweet, tweet. you woke up you can feel the sunlight hitting through the window and you get up you head downstairs on a saturday morning flip the kettle on make a coffee yeah mm. grab that washing out from the uh, washing machine take it outside in the basket with on the coffee. shoulder <laughs> Just peg it out on a nice warm day. Saturday morning, we've got no plans. We're not going anywhere. <laughs> We're just taking our time. We're taking it easy. We're going to peg our washing out. Sit down, drink the coffee, and just think about the day and what we've got ahead. Because you've got a weekend off, as you no longer work fucking weekends. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Mickey has now finished. Oh. <laughs> that's your... That's your life to come. Uh, yeah, I, I do. <laughs> I do have a weird thing about hanging washing out. It has to be hung out correctly as well. Oh. The most available area space that the, the wind and the breeze can capture. I hate people that cannot hang out washing. Oh. It makes me want to slap straight. them. Oh. Oh. When they, when they know... fold when they fold jeans at the knee on the line and put the peg on it, it's like, what are you doing? Even, even hanging jeans up the wrong way, Fucking vertical only vertical only if you're not listen and what is it with people peg washing out and you can tell they started off with the best of intentions and by the end they're literally just going peg pet just but if, you, if you can't be asked fucking leave it i don't i don't like rotary lines i think they're too close together i like the line that goes from one end of the garden to the other and you can have them all along there and it's fucking dries in like 25 minutes the next lot can go out and it's like oh, good I used to do good two lines lots of, two lots of washing and get it done within a couple of hours washed hung out dried put back in my wardrobe oh I fucking love that shit. something about sheets as well sheets that have been outside oh, to dry like, i don't like sheets oh mm. sheets uh, you can you can have i do sheets. You, you can have the sheets that's one of my and, and that is a nice part of the the summer months of me is i do like like i said the washing peg belt do you know what my problem is? As soon as the weather, and I'm talking mid-April time, all of a yeah. sudden, overnight, the weather's nice, it's garden season, all of a sudden, I think I'm fucking out of titch patch. <laughs> my problem is, I'm like, I need to buy plants. I've got no intention of buying plants or planting anything all year round. 
right? All of a sudden, I'm like, I need to buy some plants. I need to get the garden looking good, right? I need to jet wash every, all the slabs down, get it looking good, pull that barbecue out, get it all looking pristine. And then I stand there, once I've done it all, stand there, typical bloke, beer in hand. I did this. <laughs> oh, I did this. This is me. It's a bit of me, this. And then it ends Fuck and you it. don't carry on. That's it. No, I do. I'll That's the thing I do. I carry it on all summer. And then all of a sudden, bit of one one rainy day, I'm like, shut it down. Shut it down for the year. That's it. I've had enough. Do you ever buy a gazebo for the garden? I well, no, I have a... Every year. Yeah, you did. You had a little tradition, didn't you, with your gazebo and yeah, the lights. And... With my garden sofa with all the lights, B&M lights, battery powered, so solar powered, sorry. Yeah, I used to fucking love that. Awesome. Fucking loved it every year. Then I'd leave it up too long, like mid-September towards October, and it'd get windy and it'd end up in the, in the next door garden. So, like, fuck's sake. All Ben. Well, that's, that saved me a tip run. <laughs> 70 pound down the drain every year. Is it though? Because if you think about it, a conservatory, uh, a gazebo that's a year old is a bit flimsy. Those poles are a bit fucking rattly I, and loose. I used to buy the one initially when I first started doing it. I used to buy the ones with the, just the poles that stick together, and you stick in the little plastic like hook thing. Pong, yeah, yeah, different diagonals and stick it. In. But then I'd buy the ones that are a bit more expensive with the thick metal piping that you'd pull out from the middle, Constantina from the middle. And yes. you have to get on four sides and stick up, and they've got their little pegs as you go up the, down the legs and that. But yeah, so, you know, it's a bit of extra money. They're probably well dear now, though. Oh, gazebos. They used to be £15 pound in Wilco's. And then COVID hit, and anything to do with your garden was God. a million pounds. <laughs> nah, I know. Honestly, I wonder if anybody's still living on COVID rations. If anyone's still got those bags of pasta in the cupboard that never got used because they never uh, ran out. Do you think, does pasta go off? How long does it last? I mean, it's rock hard anyway, isn't it? So oh, you cook it. That's right. ask, the, ask the preppers. The preppers of the world. The ones that are preparing for nuclear war. Oh, They'll yeah. know. They're the ones that prep their food and store it that, away. That's not happening now, is it? Did you see Putin's uh, interview, interview with that cook? What's that bloke? Tucker Cush or whatever his name is. That American. Tucker, Col Tucker Coleman. Tucker Coleman. Something like that. Tucker yes. Yeah. yeah. And he, he said, oh, I'm not bothering anymore. Like, you got fuck off. <laughs> if I wanted to get rid of America, I would. But I'm not. I, I think asked. you've got to understand his logic. But I, I, I've seen some of it. And he was very open in what he was saying. Yeah. Like, they were, like, towards the end, that Tucker guy was like, listen, you've got one, you, you know, you, You've got you've got an American citizen in prison here. Like he, t this this kid was a journalist. Basically, was looking at secret documents, and they're going. The Americans saying, "Yeah, but he's not a spy, though." Like, well, actually, <laughs> he is. He's a, he's a journalist looking at government documents. That's technically espionage at one hundred and one, right? But anyway, he would. They were like, I think Putin was like. Putin, they said, like, will you release him back to us? And I was like, well, I'm not being funny. How many favours do you want from me? Yeah, I'm not blowing like, up your country. What more do you want? <laughs> <laughs> That's a dangerous road to go down. Jesus. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm just, listen, I'm just busy living, man. I can't fucking think about anything else right now. No. Honestly, get busy just... living or get busy dying. Oh, red, man. Fucking red. I watched that last yeah. week on Prime. Good old <sighs> Shawshank. Fucking love that film. Love it. That, that ending has to be the best ending of any film I've ever seen. When he walks across the beach and he sees Andy Dufresne. And he's, and <laughs> Andy he's, Dufresne. Polish, he's playing in his boat. And he looks over and he's like, oh, yeah, my friend's here. <laughs> After 10 years of waiting. Yeah, fucking Andy love that. Andy Dufresne. It was it was one of those films when you first watched it. It was just like, oh, it's a film. It's just a film when you first watch it. But then when you watch it again years later, you start to you ever go back and see a film years later and it has a different kind of meaning for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you're older and like, you understand and you're wiser. As and you well. think, well, it, it, he was very patient. Very yeah, patient. It, how long was he in there? 30, Twenty or thirty years, wasn't he? When he didn't even do it. Yeah. 
30, 20 years, 30 years. But he just did it with that little rock hammer, that tiny little hammer. To, that hammer was like that fucking big, though. It, and the end was like that. That ain't fucking small. That cave a few heads in. <laughs> and the old prison he, block. He wasn't, he wasn't thinking about that. No, no, he was, he was not out. thinking about that. Well, initially, like initially, initially, he wasn't thinking about getting out, was he? He just wanted it to cut thing. He was carving his name, and then suddenly a massive chunk fell off, and thought, "Oh, this is this shit." So, I thing is like prison system for me. Prison movies. I, just, I love all prison documentaries, all that sort of stuff. And you know, I've watched the world's toughest prisons with um, Raphael Rowe. Yeah. Those are really interesting. I love those. And then, but prison for me is fucking uh, terrifying. Like, mm. f- first day, I, I, f- I wouldn't know what to do. Like, I'm just not criminally minded. I'm, I guess I'm, I don't know, You're in too, that sense. Or... If, if you go to prison and it doesn't affect you, it means you already have a criminal mindset. If you go to prison and you're fucking scared shitless because you don't know what's going to happen, you're worried, you're in basically panic mode all the time then you did something by accident maybe and you're not so i watched i watched a podcast the other day and um only because i saw a tiktok on it hmm. but i watched the podcast like i've seen a pick up a clip of a podcast about this guy oh, I his name now. anyway he was he was in dubai he was in dubai he lived out there his family lived out there he was a kid growing up he was yeah. basically he was a DJ, and he had some mates. And it, like, obviously, Dubai and Dubai and illicit drugs, and fucking whatever. Dubai and drugs are a big no-no. One hundred percent agree with it. Like, they've they've got a clean country. We're not um, we're not trying to grow a shit hole here. Like, I get it. Fair play. Don't yeah. fuck, don't fuck around. Like I said in the last show. However, this kid had what was known as a as a baggy, an empty bag of cocaine residue in his footwell footwell oh, okay. and he was yeah. he was put he was put on death row death row and i mean anyone, to the point anyone could have put that in there no no so like he he had a mate in the car who had a load of money had a load of money on him found a baggie in the footwell this ain't like there's a long bigger story bigger picture behind yeah, it yeah. however the, the bottom of the story is he had a baggie in his footwell they tested him and i mean they took him. They they basically came, kept him in a detention camp for three weeks. Before this was like before he'd even been tried or anything. No phone calls. No nothing. Family thought he'd just got missing. Anyway, yeah, fucking goes from a buggy in the footwell to death row. He spent five years in prison because of this buggy waiting on death row to be like he had to fight a case. It's like fuck me. But they say like that is countries like that where like you're in prison. You're that's not prison. That's not British prison. Here's a TV. Here's, here's your own train. This yeah. is like thirty man in thirty man in one room. Yeah, living one in one. In one. <laughs> yeah, <sighs> Thailand is the same. You get you get put to death if you get found with drugs. I believe anyway. It's crazy, isn't it? I'll just, uh, this this is why I live by Mickey's autistic rule. Never go to I can't say that word. Never go to a country that isn't in Europe, because most of them have the sort of normal, as it were, that we're used to European laws, etc. Or just don't other, do drugs. Or, yeah, no, but it doesn't matter. Some people get caught, like this bloke. Did he do drugs? Did he have cocaine all the time? No. Someone maybe dropped it. You got shit but friends, the, but you that's think, what I'm saying. If, if you forgot yourself in public and you fucking you was in Dubai, you just you, you forgot yourself your again. Kiss your missus outside. You're arrested. Literally. You're in prison. Like, and you'd be like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> Ta- <laughs> I ain't fucking... going any any of them countries because I'm covered in tattoos, top to bottom, and that means in a lot of countries that means you're a criminal because you've been like marked within your criminal gang. Yeah, you, yeah. Fuck I, that! I, I ain't I'm, going there. I'm staying I in think, Europe, mate. <laughs> I'll stay in England it, and Wales. <laughs> like, especially like because of how covered you are. If you went to a country like <clears throat> Japan, like Japan, Japan, where, shot. <laughs> yes, tattoos are there, but like, 
they're norm they're normally affiliated with criminal gangs. Yes, exactly. The triads and all that. That's China. I know. Do you ever think like No, I'm I going there. Like, no, no, I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is in I think if somebody looked at you from afar, you could appear quite intimidating. You know, bald head. Bald head, beard, beard covered in tattoos. You're either a biker or a fucking like Skinhead. Do you know what I mean? No, like, yeah, or you're just a fucking all round fucking Dickhead. nut job. Do you know what I mean? You're just yeah. missing the uh you're missing like the bulldog with the British Union Jack. <laughs> or my Stone Island jumper. Hey. <laughs> hey. Down the pub, I'm going down the pub to have a fight. Right. I've got my jumper on, I've got my got my badge right ready. Me, na- <laughs> me nano and the batch. Go down the poser. But you could, you could have, but then again, you're right, actually. A lot of people in a lot of countries would look at you and go, fuck me. Yeah. Who's this guy? Stay there. <laughs> in America, they'd be like, you'd, you'd just be a hillbilly. <laughs> you'd be like, I'm cool with it. I'm cool. It's that line dancing. <laughs> Is there anywhere that you do want to visit? Um, I want to go to Auschwitz. Auschwitz. Auschwitz, yeah. You, um, down, you can do that in a day, you know. Yeah, go to Krakow, isn't it? In Poland. You don't. You, mm. Yeah. I used to want to go to Chernobyl and see that because a couple of friends of mine have been uh, back in the day when you could you could book a trip and they take on it for. You've got my you've got my hair anyway. You'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't have to shave either. It'd just fall out probably. Uh, <laughs> but now, obviously, that's in Ukraine with uh, the issue with Russia. <laughs> I fucking going there. Um, I always said I wanted to go to Brazil to see the the Jesus statue. Christ the Redeemer. That dude, yeah. I think that's mm-hmm. fucking awesome. There's like Things like that are certain things I want to go see. Um, Stonehenge, I want to go there where there's no barrier. Because you can apparently book tickets. You can go in like at certain times of the year. Don't get me wrong. Okay. Can't you just go? Can't you just walk up to them? That's what I'm thinking. The fence is like four foot, three foot, something like that. Yeah, but the other fence. side of the fence, the other side of the fence is a fields. It's not all fenced off. No, that's what I mean. Like, realistically... Do you, do you reckon they've got cameras? Um, they must have cameras there because you never see videos on YouTube of people... Why should, you, why should you have to pay for it? It's a natural... <coughs> I suppose they want to... That's the same with any uh, English heritage or National Trust site, though, isn't it? They buy it to keep it whole forever. So you yeah, can keep going, but, there, but you have to pay for it. It's a heritage site. Like, like the stones are already there. They don't require any upkeep. Like, what are they charging for? <laughs> like, oh, you've no, got to pay to go and look. What you, I've got to pay to go and look at stones that have been there for hundreds of years. Thousands of years. Thou- yeah, thousands of years. Yeah. And, and you're you're talking to me about upkeep? What upkeep? <laughs> They're just stones. Leave them alone. <laughs> yeah, I can't I can't see them getting the old digger out and start chiseling away and. Do you know what I mean? Polishing them, sending the lab with some like wind, window cleaner and a cloth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't that, make sense. Fair. Yeah, I don't know what they do. I get I have... things like ca- castles and all that sort of stuff, but no, stone age. Yeah, because they're lived in. You've got a keep them main you have to maintain them to make sure they're accessible to the public if you still want public to be there and to people to live in and to earn an upkeep etc but yeah no one lives in stonehenge no from the fairies and the ghosts it's kind of it's kind of like the it's kind of like the old church roof thing isn't it (laughs) like every church has its roof done (laughs) like there's always a collection plate for the church roof they've had a new roof about 10 times yeah (laughs) like out of the public (laughs) Uh, got there and moved a few tiles around but the old days they didn't they didn't have to worry like hellfire club in ireland that's on top of montpellier hill open to all the elements the world can give it that didn't fall down it's made of stone it's got a stone fucking roof doesn't fall down doesn't weather doesn't damage make the churches out of that shit what are they doing isn't it funny though like you said like like you said the hellfire club um why is that not a site? Because if, if you be. really, if you really put the effort into that, you would, 
draw a lot of attention to it. I think the, the, the it is sort of a heritage place. You don't have to pay. You have to pay in the car park down below, and it takes about forty minutes to walk up the hill through the through the forest. But they have pop, put a proper path in. Uh, you do get a lot of visitors there, and it is open twenty four seven, except the car park isn't. But yeah, I did hear rumours after the first time I went there that they were they want the local government or whoever the council wanted to mm-hmm. knock it down and build some. They always want to put rambling sites and a little calf and things like that there. They did it at Clop Hill in in uh, Bedford. And There's enough walks, man. Just fucking know. Know. Just put a fucking calf next to it if you want to do that. Or a calf in the car Isn't park. Why would, you want a, why would you want a plaque there going, the Hellfire Club used to be here, but we knocked it down. It didn't fall down of natural elements. It, you know, we knocked it down. Yeah. We got rid of it, and now you can just read this plaque and fuck off. Yeah, and you can buy <laughs> Let a them see it. in a sandwich. Let them here. see it for twenty for twenty two euros. <laughs> it's been there since right. seventeen hundreds, and it just shows that in the old days they knew how to build shit. Nowadays, they they couldn't build fuck all. But unfortunately, it's one of the sites where a lot of people have gone to. A lot of famous people have gone there. They have. Like, make something of it. You they know. could, they could, not necessarily commercialise it, but you could have like a gift shop where they could, you could buy T-shirts. I survived the Hellfire Club, whatever. Satan was here because he was supposed to be there. Shit like that. That would that would bring in money. They could use that money then to pay employees for the upkeep. Maybe if there's any repairs he's doing, because it has got a metal staircase in the middle that over time would need to be improved and maintained. Otherwise, it'll fall mm-hmm. down. <clears throat> so things like that they could do that they could improve use the money to improve the car park put another facilities there put toilets in there i just don't yeah. understand how if you want to if it's a tourist attraction that whether they want it to be or not it is that's the thing that's what i'm saying change is it change is it is it a, is it an attraction or is it a people saying like we don't want people coming here i don't know the fact that there's no one around there that lives near it that it's not in that vicinity anyway. You have to go down through the forest, out of the the car park, and then there's houses like the old houses. Do they the mind? Do no, but nobody minds people being there. Well, no, because it's a big car park for it, which is yeah. purposely built and put there for mm. that attraction. You know, like you went to Pendle Hill. Like locals don't like how many people turn up at night. They don't. They don't. Yeah. From what I've heard, they don't like. Um, the, the ghost hunters and witch people coming up because I'm doing pen, pen, and watching, Pendle Hill yeah. isn't a, isn't just a hill. There are certain areas of the Pendle area, like little town, little villages, I should say, where certain yeah. things happened in the story of the Pendle witch trials. So each little village in the area has its own little story. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But there is one bit um, where the famous graveyard is with the church um where i think alice nutter is buried her gravestone is there they don't like people coming in to the little village at night time ghost hunters explorers whatever but then again all the little village there's loads of different shops witch shops and little things you can buy and during halloween month they have like little witches tied to like lamp posts and fence posts, everything throughout the the village and it looks really nice. So I think as a whole the community sort of likes the idea, but I suppose you get the odd person and oh I don't like that, you fuck off. Them sort of people. Mm-hmm. So yeah, Pendle Hill is they they I think they do quite a lot with Pendle Hill. I think the witch shops and that there. They do rely on it and there is little um uh, like little pop up wooden shacks so they sell like snacks people people cash in on anything do you know what i noticed when i went to the shambles in york yeah yeah like the shambles is, and people will say it has but the truth is of the matter is the shambles has got fuck all to do with harry potter nothing it's supposed to be fuck what diagon alley is based on isn't it it is based on it yeah yeah. And they did apply to the local council to use it, but for the amount of time that it was going to have to be closed off from the public, 
oh, it yeah. wasn't it, it wasn't worth it. Right. And they said, listen, it's not it's a beautiful location, but it's not an ideal filming location. And apparently the local council wanted not just sort of a few million. They wanted tens of millions to use it. Well, they have got two, about... Harry po- two Harry Potter shops down there as well. Down they've also there. got little... Yeah, yeah. But they've also got shops that are basically selling wands and all that sort of shit. And you think... Exactly, yeah. You, you're just cashing in. Cashing and in on it, yeah. Why not, I guess? <laughs> like, you can make money. Fucking make money. That's that's why we're on on this planet to make money, to live, to work, to pay for shit. I just love the so, fact of. I mean, the problem is in this day and age is if you have an idea that involves you making a few quid, some fucker's going to try and fucking tax you for it. Tax you on it. And oh my you, god! You get you get taxed on your wages, and you go to a shop, and you pay tax on your food you buy, and then you go and buy petrol, and you have to pay tax on that, and then you have to you eat. And you buy fucking pay tax on that, and your drinks, everything is tax, tax like twenty times. It's like fucking, I've paid all that. It's, it's ridiculous. <laughs> I, I hate the tax system. Hate it. I hate now that obviously they're saying that men are more likely going to be working up until the age of eighty. Retirement age is is, is going to have to go up. I thought it was seventy one. <laughs> No, it's going up. It's going to be pushing up to eighty now, because for, for tax reasons, people just they can't afford for people to be out of work well, at sixty-five. There, there is a reason they need all that tax, but we don't go into that. No, we don't discuss politics on this show. No, not since we had Boris on a few years ago. We all had a few drinks, and that was it. <laughs> some cheese and wine oh some cheers and some wine yes um yeah no but just can you imagine like the fact that i think you will probably still be able to retire in what's that you you probably got what 20 years 25 Six, years 68 left? i think i was down for they worked it out a few years ago that you're born on this year then this is the, the year you can retire or the age you can retire i personally don't want to retire you get That's bored person. and kill your wife. <laughs> or you just die. Or that, yeah. yeah a lot of people, people do die because they don't have a purpose anymore. That's it. And can you imagine, like, that's what gets me thinking about more, the, the, the life choices I make or the, or the things that have passed me. Or like you said, the things that have passed you. And you think, well, that stage of my life is done with now. I won't be doing that again. You know? And you think, Oh fuck! That's it. It's over that bit. Like, and you just think, "Oh my god, did I did I take did I, did I take advantage of that amount of time? Did I use it all correctly?" Like, but I think if I just retired and just sat there and gone, "Hold on a second, I've just finished working. I finished working for what I've been doing my whole life to pay for everything, and now all of a sudden, someone's going to be managing my finances for me and telling me that this is how much you have to live on." Yeah. You're because you've lived your life on your own terms, and you earn what you want to earn. You save what you want to save, but then all of a sudden it's like, oh yeah, you get this much to live in a year. Right. I don't think so. See, it, if you have no savings, or you've cashed some money out of your pension, because you can cash money out of your pension at fifty, I think you can cash like you could take twenty grand out of your pension at fifty if you wanted to. Yeah. And then you spunk that 20 grand. You spunk that out the wall on some shit. And then now you've got less to live on when it comes to retirement. And then all of a sudden you cash in a fucking state pension. And you think, oh yeah. my God. Fuck no. Nah. It's, it's depressing getting old. In some ways. It, it is. But then, you know, it's a short life, right? Like, you, you, you got to you know, look at it. what 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 are you on this planet for? Are you just on this planet to work, procreate, and then die, or are you on the on the earth to live and experience everything? That's the way you got to look at it. And I think that's right. Right. I think your cycle is your cycle, and your your path is laid out for you. However, you can make alternative arrangements if you want to stray and do something different. That's why I always say it's never too late to start something. Like, you know, you wanted to fucking learn something or do something or fucking 
you know, improve yourself. I don't think there's a time limit on that. No. I don't think, I think the problem is people measure, people measure their own success based on what other people's achievements are. And I think if you do that, then you'll always be in the, I'm going to be that step behind it. Yeah, you're always catching right. up. To somebody else as well. You're catching up to someone else's achievements that are, that don't even know who you are. Like, yeah. I think if you set out the path where you want to live. Just grow old with grace. Do you know, like, people moan about the fucking hairline. Like, once my hair's gone, it's gone. That's it. It's job done. I'm not getting a hair transplant. I'm not paying five grand to have some fucking needles put in my head. Like, <laughs> it's going. It's receding. Like, that's it. Fair, yours is care. better at your age than mine was. I, I, do you know what? You wear hats, though. I've never worn hats. That's bullshit, no. That's not a thing. That's of course mine... I've got about, uh, which way am I going? About there, so that gap there. Nah, you're back further. You're back further. No, no, you you're like... like... You can see my fucking hair. No, I'm in the gap. Look. Yeah. The gap that I need to fill with this bit. And then all this here, I'm on about. So but would you be bo- like, are you bothered though? Like, no, because I shaved really? my head. And if I had long no, hair if, like yours, then it'd just be covered, sort of. Well, so, yeah, because when you had when you had long hair, it was long. Yeah, you didn't really notice. And it, and it ain't that long ago. It's only five years. You could grow your hair again. I remember when you said, "If you grew your hair, do you think you'd have hair?" <laughs> Do you think it'd grow back? I said, yes, no. I only shaved it. I didn't take chunks out. No, but no, what I'm saying is, do you think it would? Do you think it would? Do you think it would grow back, or do you think it would be like it would take you years to just grow even a few inches? You mean would the 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 growing process have been slowed down? I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. You wouldn't know until you did it like this. No. And I look shit with fluffy hair so no thanks <laughs> I don't Ugh. think so oh god people well what a lovely little note to have a nice little podcast nice little show yeah. it's been nice and light this evening thanks I've really enjoyed it tonight yeah I've enjoyed, enjoyed it actually episode. not a lot of pressure involved just a nice easy show we like that people we like just discussing yeah. random shit and so, then remember you don't have to go all out in two days' time for Valentine's. Just book a flight. Just book a <laughs> to flight. <Iraq. laughs> yeah. Or, or order yourself a four foot midget. <laughs> Iraq or a midget. Fucking love it. You can uh, choose. You yeah. decide, people. Yeah, you decide. On that note, people. It's up to you. Thanks for joining us on another show, Dads, Lads, and Kebabs. I've been Niall Q for this evening. Deuces, fuck off. I might be a Mickey Mouse. Au revoir.